Ah, it's happening. We're doing this. Okay. Here we go. Another week, another live stream. Welcome to this week's live stream. As per usual, we're going to be putting the things that I showed you in some of my YouTube videos to practice live with audience interaction. Good to have all you guys here. We're going to be going through the step by step. And why I wanted to do this for the ebook writing video is because it's a complex topic, okay? And there's many little questions that you guys might have that I can answer here live. But basically what I wanted to do is go step by step and show you how to put the prompts to work that I showed you inside of the video. I personally think it's one of the better videos and one of the most practical videos that I recently created. The YouTube al algorithm doesn't seem to think that up until now, but hey, you know, it is what it is. I know that some of you core followers will appreciate this one because some of the prompts and concepts outlined in there are extremely convenient no matter the situation. doesn't matter if you're writing an ebook. You could be writing an article um, that is extremely long or you could be writing some research paper or you could be writing a thesis or anything that is longer. All the techniques discussed inside of the video will benefit that. And <laughs> matter of fact, maybe I should rethink the titling. Maybe not as many people are interested in writing ebooks with ChatGPT, you know? Maybe I should retitle it something like writing long pieces of text with ChatGPT. I don't know. Whatever it might be, just so you guys are informed, this is all about writing long text and making it as good as possible with the help of ChatGPT. So I quickly want to go through the video without watching it and commenting on every a little thing in there. Oh, we have Brazil in the chat. That's always good to see. Um, yeah, so when it comes to converting the output into the right format, Leon, let me know what kind of format you would like. Let me know what kind of format you would like. Um, oh, and by the way, <laughs> I'm totally sunburned. Hard to deny that been kite surfing over the weekend and let me tell you if you don't apply sunscreen and you spend a few hours on the water this is this is how you're gonna look too either way either way let's let's have a look at this video okay so what happened in here is there's basically five points and maybe i would even slim it down to three concepts that we need to talk about here okay first of all is increasing the quality of the content of your book so researching and the concept I introduce here is, you know, 
use ChatGPT to research your book first, right? You can research one article, summarize a second one, you can ask it a question, and then you can go ahead and you can use this prompt that takes all the conversation above and summarizes it. So let's say we did that research and we're going to do this, all of this practically in a second here, right? But let's say you go ahead and you copy a Wikipedia article and then you're like summarize and then you're, you're like, okay, what are some ways of, you know, what, tell me something about the history of artificial intelligence, if that's our topic, right? Then ChatGPT does that. And you, you go through these various exercises in there in one chat, right? So you're staying within the context of one chat and then you run now summarize all the summaries you created in a bullet point list. Okay, given this works, and this is the this is the reason I like these lives because I can you know go a little more in depth. Uh, this works if you've only created summaries. Um, we will have to modify this in our case where we will be using various sources. But the point is, it will create a bullet point list that is kind of a, you know, it's the ultimate summary. It's the summary of summaries. And why that is great is because it will be gaining its information and it will be gathering its information from the various summaries and the, um, and the entire context of the conversation. If you just feed it a Wikipedia article and you're like summarize, well, it has less information to go off. And, and that's what I'm trying to communicate. It's really smart to, you know, bring in multiple sources of information and then filtering down instead of just taking one and filtering and then another and filtering, it just does does a better job. And for some of you, the, the reason for that might be quite obvious and it's because it has more context, right? If you give it multiple um, data points, it has more context and your outputs will be better. Um, yeah, Leon, I, I like it. Okay, so for a prompt book, is that what you're asking? So please share some of your brilliance when it comes to converting the output into the right format. Okay, so you're looking to write a prompt book. Um, no, yeah, I, I like that question, man. I'm happy to answer that. So I can tell you what I did there. <laughs> like, I'm sorry to say, but I edited all of that manually. Um, I use InDesign and I had to copy paste my various prompts. My workflow went as follows. Um, I developed all my prompt ideas inside of an Excel sheet first. Now I moved to a Notion template just because it's more convenient. Um, and I started using Notion for everything over the past few months. But generally speaking, I collected all of my ideas inside of uh, Excel. Then I developed prompts from those ideas. Also, some of them, uh, some of the approaches were obviously inspired by other people's approaches. So, for example, if I wanted to, you know, write emails, I had a look at how other people use ChatGPT to write emails. And then I came up with my own prompt and just tested various flavors. And once I found something that really worked for me, um, I made a point out of testing it on multiple use cases. And once I was happy with the, with the results every single time, I considered that prompt to be, you know, the prompt that I use. That's my prompt. And um, then I copied it from the Excel sheet into InDesign. Um, I have to say, <laughs> I did a little mistake when creating that prompt book first because I never, I never wrote a document that long before. So, you know, I just knew I don't want to use Word for it. Um, and first I used Adobe... What was it called? Um, I don't remember the name of the software, but it's it's um, it's like a it's like a Canva by Adobe, sort of. Um, I forgot the name, but it's essentially like a very entry level software. And what happened there is uh, it doesn't allow for more than twenty pages, and my ebook has like one hundred twenty pages, right? So once I got past that and I tried exporting, I was like, wow, all this work for nothing. So I had to start over, and it was it was back to me and my Excel sheet. Um, my second approach was a fail too. Let me tell you, my second approach was uh, using Adobe Acrobat. So, so what I figured is the PDF exports from that Adobe app, and this is you know story time. This is how not to do it, I guess. This is, uh, I'll answer your question though. Don't worry. So the second approach was really uh, using Adobe Acrobat to edit the PDF document that was output by that you know Canva by Adobe, whatever you whatever that thing was called. Um, and uh, that didn't work either because, well, it did kind of work. Actually, version 1.0 of the book was 
the version that I edited inside of Adobe Acrobat. So if you're not familiar, Adobe Acrobat is like a PDF viewer that also allows you to edit PDFs. So what I did there is just like du duplicated pages and then change the text. The thing is like it changes fonts sometimes randomly and you know the text boxes are sometimes shifted by a few pixels and sometimes by like half a page and there's not much you can do and sometimes just like 20 pages upstream of what you're doing something moves for no particular reason so it's i wouldn't recommend it it's not a good software for putting an ebook together and finally I, I i arrived at the final destination in design i knew that was the correct software it's just i i couldn't work it and if you consider the context of uh, me putting out the first version of the ebook on the 23rd of december at half past seven in the morning where I finished the book at three in the morning and then I spent three hours creating a sales page. Um, you know, there was no time to learn in design. <laughs> there was, I just wanted to have that thing done by uh, before Christmas. I knew the content was quality. So I kind of, you know, I was just like, okay, formatting and a nice cover and all that. I, I can do that later on. I need to get this content out. And for anybody that remembers, um, the book came out and it had all the content already, right? Given there, there were no like nice headings, there was no table of contact, contents, but you know, it was a version 1.0. And I, would, I was proud of it because the content was really good. And then in January, I followed up, I created version 2.0. And right now we're working on version 3.0. And the, the way it's gonna work is everybody that bought version 1.0 or 2.0 is gonna get the third version for free. So I don't know, that's just a little tangent on my ebook. Oh, by the way, version 3.0 is optimized for GPT-4. So that, that's all I, I'll say there. Uh, about 90% of the book was rewritten. 90% uh, of the prompts were modified or extended to fit GPT-4. Either way, that would be my little rant on how I wrote the ebook uh, because you asked. And that's how I would, I would recommend go, just go straight to InDesign. It might take you, you know, a few hours to get familiar with it. You might need someone's help. Um, it's, you know, is it, someone helped me to, to, to transform it from the first PDF into the InDesign document, um, uh, because it, I just couldn't figure it out intuitive, intuitively. I bet if I spent like one day with the software, I could have done it, but you know, I just had someone help me who already knew InDesign to, to get the layout in place. And that's what I would recommend you do too, if you don't have in design experience. So that that's how I did the prompt book. And then I wrote a bunch of uh, pages and chapters as an intro. And that's essentially the entire story. I hope that helped. Um, with that being said, let's talk about writing just some random ebook here. And here I really want to like focus in on the usage of ChatGPT in the process. So back to what I was talking about earlier. Um, in this new video, I present you with like various, it's, 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 a, it's a classic AI advantage prompt video, you know, it's a classic, you know, the ones that I posted three months ago, I suppose, but like really valuable content here, in here. And again, this is really about writing like longer form documents with ChatGPT. Okay. So this is not just about ebook writing. So first of all, we talked about the ability to summarize, um, in a advanced manner. So, so I think. It's, it's really helpful to do your research within ChatGPT. And even if you did it outside, just bring it into ChatGPT and use the fact that you can send 10, 20 messages, you know, let it process the research. Just let it know, I, like, you know, here is my, okay, we'll go through all this one by one. I'll show you in practice, okay? But the point is like, if you do it within here, then you can get to this point of this workflow and you'll get superior results. If you're like, write me an outline for a 30,000 word book on the printing press, then it's gonna do that. But if you use the second prompt, write me an outline for a 30,000 word book on the printing press, including the summaries that you created above. If you do that, it's just so much better. Because as you might know, context is king when it comes to this stuff. And this just gives it so much context, especially if you have like 10, 15, 20 messages in there. Where you where there where there's work inside of the research, there's work inside of your prompts that you sent previously, right? It takes all that, and now it takes all that knowledge and it packs it into your outline, and the outlines become so much better. Why is that important? Because the outline is the spine of your book, right? It's the without that everything falls apart. So, and and that's also what we'll be generating the book from, right? That that's what this video communicates. It's one of the main points in here. 
um, by generating an outline, you're able to get around the fact that um, there is a um, case limitation. David Klein uh, or Klein, have you seen Microsoft Bing? Of course I've seen Microsoft Bing. Um, I don't find it superior in most use cases that I use ChatGPT for. And uh, matter of fact, sometimes I find that a little funky. That's why I don't really cover it on the channel. Um, I really like to share the things that I find convenient. And I really like to make the videos that I wish existed. Um, yes, yeah, so that's why I don't create Bing videos. I don't really yearn for, for more Bing videos. That's why I don't create them. Maybe it's a mistake. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's something, some interesting functionality in there, except of the connectivity to the internet that I'm not aware of. Feel free to share. Um, either way, let's move forward. So um, mind mapping. I like that recommendation. Thanks, Safa, for collecting and dumping all your ideas at once. Use mind mapping. I agree. There, there is something about um, that, that way of visualizing things. I actually use Whimsical, if you're familiar, and, and it works inside of Notion. Like given, okay, you have to click a button and then the mind map opens up. But I think uh, mind maps are really great too. Um, so yeah, you could totally, you know, um, I don't, actually, I don't think right now you could just drag and drop your mind map into ChatGPT, but with the multimodal capabilities, this is going to be a reality soon. Um, how do you feel about the recent open letter to pause AI development for six months? That's a great question, Mark. I created a separate video um, about the dangers of AI three days ago. And, and there, you know, there's I, I couldn't do it justice within the stream. Um, watch that video if you want a fully fledged answer. Uh, TLDR on the whole thing is I, I don't think you can stop the whole world from uh, developing this tech. And I, I think that's why there's no real point. Um, I think it's a good idea, but I don't think you can stop the wor whole world. So it's it's not a practical idea. Uh, that's my that's my short take. What is mind mapping? Mind mapping is uh, when you, when you, um, hmm, maybe I could, maybe I could show you, I, I'll show you a mind map one second. So I'll, I'll switch to the camera. So, oh, Nightclass, thanks for becoming a member, man. Appreciate that, appreciate that. It's very early days for the membership. We kind of just started it on the side, you know, the lowest tier tier level. It's kind of like a, you know, a little club. You can you can join the Discord, and um, if you link it to your YouTube, you're gonna. There's a chat room that is dead most of the time for now, because there's only like 30 people in there. But um, there's a members only room in there, and I plan to do more with it as soon as the course comes out and we build the channel. Uh, but right now, I'm really. This is like the course is, let me tell you, it has been all consuming, including sleep. <laughs> so either way, I wanted to show you a mind map and then we'll get into actually writing a book. How about that? So if I open up my, my notion here, I can show you how I use mind maps. And I think I, I want to do this because it's, it, it is indeed very relevant to writing ebooks. I think it's a fantastic tool to kind of, um, get a lot of information down. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. So let's see. I'll just quickly pull this up for you. Um, yes. So for example, oh, <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's not linked right now. I don't want to log in. So I'll, I think I'll just use good old Google. Uh, I'll just use good old Google here and I'll show you what a mind map is. Um, it's very simple. It's something like this. It's just a way to organize your thoughts. So essentially it's, you know, let's say in the middle is uh, the title of your ebook. And then you have these little branches going out that can either end there or there's they can like split up into further branches. So it's really a great way to kind of categorize thoughts, you know. You can create these buckets of ideas. So when you're like, oh, I maybe, you know, maybe I want to create like a let's say a prompt book, because the question was here and I and I did that, right? So maybe you could create like maybe you have a bunch of prompts, but what are you gonna do? Like throw them all into one bucket? No. Like you're gonna be like, okay, these are maybe productivity related related. So you're gonna do a branch which says productivity these are maybe more writing writing related than you do a branch, which is writing. And then the prompts and the titles of them could be underneath here, right? And already, you did you sort 
it out a lot. So I would totally agree with Safa in the chat here. Um, <laughs> you look really exhausted today. Yeah, no, no, I'm good. I'm just a little sun sunburned and it's, it's been a long day, but um, it's fine. It's fine. So it's just a great way of organizing your, um, your thoughts and I would definitely recommend it. So with that being said, let's get into the content here. Let's actually... Um, let's actually start doing some of this stuff here. Um, so I would really like to show you like various ways to research. Okay. So like one of them would be summarizing, right? This is, this is the one that you might be already. And hmm. now the question is, do we want to do this GPT-4 or GPT? Because GPT-3.5 is going to be so much faster when we do this live. Hmm. Not sure. I, I think we're going to go with GPT-3.5. I... <laughs> Now, nah, whatever, actually, let's let's do the best. Let's do the best um, and let's summarize in here. So step one would be like, you know, going to Wikipedia. And look, man, look, like class. am I a little exhausted and summer than all? Yes. But is it Monday and are we doing the stream like every Monday? You bet. No breaks, man. Next Monday, I'll actually be, I'll be in Egypt for a few days and I'll, you know, I'll just stream from my laptop. I'll, yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's pick a topic here. So, okay, chat, this is your time to shine. What topic do we write our little ebook here on? Okay. And this is not going to be like a masterpiece. I feel like I'm just going to delete it, but I just want to show you the process, how this would look. What topic do you want us to write an ebook on here together? Come on, give me some good recommendations. You could tell I'm a little, you know, a little drained from like life and all the work, but I'm sure you can provide some great ideas here. What if we did it about cats with hats? <laughs> That's not a good ebook topic. It's a great picture though. <laughs> I'll look at this one too. This one is from uh this one is by Remy from the server, our mod. <laughs> I like it. No one here has been sleeping since ChatGPT4. Yeah, I guess that that makes me kind of the mascot of, of the AI community. <laughs> oh, Okay, let's see, let's see. What can, what can we do here? What can we do here? Any ideas? What if we did maybe, you know, maybe... <laughs> no, 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 I think we're going to take a simple topic that, that everybody can kind of... Maybe not... Well, we're going to try something that everybody can relate to, right? So what if we just did, you know, AI use in prosthetics, guys? <laughs> okay. Actually, that's a good one. That's kind of a good one. That's actually kind of a good one. I like that, man. Ghani, thanks. What if we did prompt engineering? I mean, how to make money with ChatGPT? <laughs> oh boy, dude. I It's so bad. I actually like it, David. A crab that lost his job as street sweeper on the ocean floor. <laughs> uh, I, I, like, I like these ideas, guys. This is great. How about millennial men versus millennial women? Ooh, that's an ooh, that's an interesting one. That's an interesting one. Okay. Okay, so I'm, you know, okay, we're, we're going to do a vote here. How about that? I think we need to do a vote here. Um let me give it give me 20 seconds. We'll do this. You know, usually I rush through these live sessions where I'm like, "Ooh, it needs to be, you know, straight to the point and like a video, you know." But this is not a video. I'd rather do this poll and get your guys' opinion on what we want to do here, right? So let's do this. So I'm, I'm just going to pick my three favorites and then you guys pick, okay? Um, <laughs> this should be fun. This should be fun. Okay. So while I type this up, while I type this up, I'm going to I'm gonna do a cheeky little ad. So, what, so let me start the poll and hit this ad button and let's do this. So uh, start a poll. Okay. What topic should we write up? Our book about okay so the first one would be um millennial men versus millennial women okay that's one all right <laughs> a second one would be a crab that lost his job as 
Street sweeper on the ocean floor. All right. Okay, I have to like condense this. So, oh, uh, and I can share my screen again here. So let's do this. Um, oh yeah, I guess this this is like, whatever. So this is this is where we do this, okay? And then we add an option, and we'll do one more. We'll do it one more. How to make money with ChatGPT? That's kind of a scammy one, but you know, I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys. Um, we can do that too. Maybe one more. Maybe one more. Okay, AI use in prosthetics. We'll do a serious one. Let's see if there's anything new. <laughs> Never trust the llama. It's a fondness for wearing hats. Okay, okay, great. So, okay, so that's a question. That's a question. You guys, you guys, let me know what you think. You get to vote now. You get to vote now, and in about thirty seconds. Um, we'll pick, we'll pick a winner. So yeah, I, I don't know how to make money with ChatGPT. It's like kind of the topic that, I don't know, it's just so ingenuine because I, I don't think there's real ways to make money just with ChatGPT. There's ways to make money in the real world and you can get more effective at doing it, right? You could start one person businesses. That's the video I did with ChatGPT where you kind of, you know, leverage your knowledge of the software, but I don't think there's a real way to make money just with ChatGPT. Ooh, so okay, so millennial man versus millennial woman is winning this one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. AI use in prosthetics is not looking good. A crab lost his job and is now working as a street sweeper. Also not looking too good. Okay. It's every second ad for me. Oh my God. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that works, actually. Um, okay. Okay. So we're gonna... Ooh, it's really close. <gasps> how to make money with ChatGPT is winning. Oh, no. Please don't. Please don't. We're gonna, we're gonna have to do this. Ooh, Millennial Man is winning again. Okay. So 20 votes. We're gonna, we're gonna give this another... I don't know. 10 seconds, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> some 10 seconds. So, so go ahead, cast your vote, cast your vote. And then, I don't know, then we're going to do this. We're going to write a book on the topic you guys pick. It's 40% to 40% right now. We need another vote. The next two votes decide. Oh no, ChatGPT money making is winning here. <laughs> We are going to find out. Okay, how to make money with ChatGPT is winning. Oh no. Guys, seriously? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. You've seen those videos. You know there's not much substance there. I guess I'll have to do it. I guess I'll have to do it. 40%. It's winning. Millennial men versus millennial women. Okay, final countdown. Okay. Five, four, <laughs> three. Anyone <laughs> cast your vote? Please. Wait, can I vote? No, I can't. Two and a half. 45%. Two. One. All right, let's talk about making money with ChatGPT. Wow, 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 it's very nice. <laughs> this is it. Okay, well, you guys are, you guys are cruel. What can I say? What can I say? All right. Let's do this. Okay, so making money with ChatGPT. Let's write a little ebook on that. Okay. How do we approach this? So let's think about some good sources for that. Okay, right? So one good source would be asking ChatGPT, right? I think I think that's one we'll include. A second good source that comes immediately to mind is maybe a popular YouTube video's transcript on how to make money with ChatGPT. So that's that's the second thing we're gonna be doing here, okay? And then I want to include a third source. And a third source maybe would be some blog article, right? Let's say that's the way we're doing research. We're not actually doing anything. 
<laughs> we're just scouring the internet for stuff other people have done. Do not recommend that approach, but hey, we can definitely do that. So um, let's have a look. So let's let's start by researching this. Let's start inside of let's start inside of um, Chat GPT by saying summarize the following text, and now we're gonna you know, how to make money with GPT-4. Let's make it, you know, contextual and relevant. Okay. And and you know what? One more thing. We're going to add a little text. Um, is, there a, is there an easy way to, to add a text like this? I think so. Add. There you go. Book. So we're writing a book, right? And the book topic is how to make money with chat GPT. Okay. And now let's just make it a little smaller like this. Cool. That looks good to me. Okay, perfect. So let's get into this. So um, let's just start by finding some articles. So I don't know, let's, and we're going to be faster, right? The focus today is not on quality, right? This is all about showing you in the entire process. So I don't know, there's some medium article that ranks at the top. Let's have a quick look at this content creation services, AI powered copywriting, virtual assistants and chatbots. Yeah, building that. That's good language tutoring. Interesting. GPT four's language capabilities creative writing i think these are some good recommendations honestly content content creation and marketing you know like copywriting and content creation are some of the biggest opportunities in this in my opinion so yes let's do that so um yeah i kind of like it so let's copy this article um and also you know by the way shout out to julian that wrote this you know we're just gonna devour it with gpt4 so I'm just going to copy paste this after the prompt, you know, summarize the following text. We could also, honestly, we could also, in the name of simplicity, we could just do this. You know, this is, the, this is our separator. And now it's going to summarize it. All right. So while it summarizes, we're going to find our second source, okay? And now we're going to head on over to YouTube, as mentioned before. So on YouTube, uh, hey, this is us. I like this thumbnail. That's, that's cool. That little glove over there. Anyway, so what we're going to do here is we're going to be like, um, make money GPT-4. And let's find some quality videos here. Let's go with somebody, with somebody familiar here. The thing is most like, yeah, I don't know. Th this is kind of the, I guess Andre is, is legit here. Um, side hustles. There's a bunch of side hustlers, YouTube side hustlers. <laughs> this is not about making money. This is a good video. Um, I'm not really sure which one to click on here. Any recommendations, guys? Is, is there like a good one? Uh, because this is like a bunch of people trying to get into the AI niche now, so they take this angle. But I guess, I guess we could. I guess we could take this guy's video about passive income. I think I've seen one of his videos before. They're usually. This is by far the easiest. Oh boy. You know. Okay. Okay. Let's say. Let's say this is. Let's say this is good enough. So. Now, what do we do? What do we do? What you can do is you can Google YouTube transcript. <laughs> and there's a bunch of tools. Um, yeah, I believe YT, this is, yeah. So this is, this is one you can definitely use. You just copy the URL, you paste them into one of these transcribers, um, and... Wait, I'm not I'm not positive on which one is, is ideal, but there you go. There's the transcript. And the funny thing about this is uh, this transcript is pulled from um, the YouTube video itself because it, it lives in there, right? It doesn't have to generate it. 
It's just right there. So what we can do um, is just copy this transcript. This is, if you're a creator, you get this in the back end. Um, otherwise, you know, you need to use a tool like this, but this is perfect. So we have the YouTube transcript like this, right? We can close these tools. We can close the video. And now we can go back to GPT-4. You know, we got a summary of the first thing. So let's read that first and then let's summarize the second thing too. We can, maybe we can start it meanwhile because it's going to take a while. Okay. So in summary, GPT-4 presents a wide array of opportunities for generating income through its advanced language capabilities. Five innovative ways to monetize GPT-4 include offering content creation services, providing AI-powered copywriting, and the other stuff we talked about before. This looks like quite the perfect, perfect summary. Cool. So now we took this YouTube transcript and I really wanted to share this because this is such a fantastic way of finding information because honestly, a lot of these YouTube videos, especially mine, <laughs> have higher quality content than what you'll find on Google quickly, right? A lot of the blog posts, they're, they're quite like surface level, you know, they're like a two, three minute read. And then you have these YouTube videos that are like 10, 15 minutes packed with a person just like getting at it, you know, like hammering one point after the next. It's just more in depth. So, and, and often uh, there's even better research behind it. So that's why I love this method. You could just totally take that. And look, because there was more than in the blog post, it created several steps. So let's see what this video is about without looking at the video. Um, okay, promoting CPA offers from CPA networks like CPA Grip or F+. So this is all about like affiliate income, right? The steps are use Mixo to create a website or landing page for your CPA offer. Find CPA offer to promote or networks. Okay, so this is a concrete tutorial on how to generate affiliate income from this, right? And let me look at the chat here because I've been getting into my content here. Um, you know it works because he's yelling, <laughs> I guess. I will now use ChatGPT to summarize them. Hey man, if you summarize them, you're going to miss out on all the little tips. You're going to miss out on all the little tips. Because yes, if you summarize this video, yeah, you're going to get like, oh yeah, you can do these five things to summarize. But there's so much little knowledge in between, you know. You can do that, of course. I'm not going to stop you from doing that. But it's, it's um, I think it's good for live streams, honestly, you know. Because here it's, it's really about the interaction here. But you don't have to watch the one hour long live stream. You can just summarize it. It's also really good for meetings, by the way. If you can get meeting transcripts, that's what I've been doing with my meetings recently. It's it's excellent. Either way, okay, so so we have now the summary of the video here, right? And we said we want a third source. So we have YouTube. We have uh, the blog article. Now let's ask ChatGPT, GPT-4 itself. Let's start by in your opinion. And this... This little building block inside of a prompt is super interesting because it, it gives the freedom to GPT-4 to express its opinion. If you don't say in your opinion, it's going to be way more uh, restrictive on what it serves you. And it does have an opinion. That's the thing. It certainly has an opinion, okay? Even if they try to kind of hide it, it always has an opinion. So in your opinion, comma, what... Are, and look, do you hear how slowly I'm going through this prompt? Do you hear how like carefully I'm picking every single word? That's what you have to do. In your opinion, what are the, let's say, most practical ways to make money with GPT-4? Okay. I think there's no fluff there, no word, like, this is straight to the point. It's concise, it has instructions, it has context, it's what we want, it's perfect. Okay, and now it gives its opinion. In my opinion, the most practical ways to make money with GPT-4 are <laughs> brought to you by GPT-4, it's kind of cool. Oh, you're about to get a prompt and engineer your job, that's amazing, man. It's like our job is just for temp if everything, everybody's doing it. Um, I think it will evolve. And uh, dude, 
prompt engineering, yes, like like this, like the I would if you if you look at the space like a pool, then you have the shallow end of the pool, and that's where most people spend their time now. That is like you know easy prompts like this, even easy prompts like this. But then there's a deep end of the pool, man. And let me tell you, I don't think that's going away. I don't think that's going away. Um, uh, you're gonna get a lot of presets, and you're gonna get a lot of like intuitive features where people won't need like basic prompt engineering like I teach it in some of my videos now. But the deep end of the pool, man, that's gonna that's gonna prevail. That's gonna prevail. Trust me on that. Um there's there's some things where you have to be extremely specific with your requests to get exactly what you want. And those skill sets are, you know, they're harder to acquire because you have to get basic prompt engineering down first to get there. But you know, once you're there, it's it's a world of opportunities. Either way, so in your opinion, what are the most practical ways to make money with GPT-4? I mean, a fantastic question to ask GPT-4, right? Content creation, copywriting, virtual assistant services, language translation, tutoring, programming, creative writing. <laughs> is it just me or is this blog post here? <laughs> Content creation, AI-powered copywriting, virtual assistants. AI-driven language tutoring, AI-generated creative writing. How many of these can we find in here? Well, I see one. <laughs> I see two. <laughs> I see three. He even took the order, man. <laughs> I see four. Wait, was it was it tutoring? I think it was tutoring. It was one of these. And then it was one more. Yeah, creative writing. He just left out programming. He just took like the first... He took, the fr he took five out of the first seven and he was like, yep. That's my blog post. All right. So, yeah, good points in here. Um, you got the job because of my videos? Nah, I don't. Don't. I, I'm sure that's not 100% true, but I'm sure there's also like a grain of truth to that. So, I'm glad to help, man. I'm glad to help. Okay. Anyway, so we have this. So, let's move forward with writing the book. Let's wrap, let's wrap this up here soon. So, we have some points here, right? And now we have three completely different sources. We have the YouTube video, we have the blog article, and we have, um, you know, this answer by GPT. So the next step here would really be this. Write me an outline, and we're not going to do 30,000 words, right? But we're going to do, write me an outline for, uh, let's just say, I don't know, 10,000 word book on the printing press, on uh, how to make money with GPT-4, including the content we discussed above. And above gives it, gives it the ability to kind of tap into everything above. Now, there's two approaches to this. Like one of them could be you just go for the summaries and for the answers including the answers you provided above. And one could be um, going, this would be broader, right? This would go deeper into this transcript. So I think what I want to do here is I kind of like the summaries, uh, including the answers you provided above. All right. So if we do this, it's going to write us a tra uh, outline. And that kind of brings me close to the end of the session because what, um, what I wanted to show you here is that, first of all, GPT-4 is really excellent at um, structuring these outlines. It's better than ChatGPT, uh, than GPT-3.5. It numbers them and it just, it sometimes just feel like it makes more sense. I feel like it makes more sense how it structures it, which chapters come when, et cetera, okay? So, so that's the thing. Um, yeah. How can I learn prompt engineering? Man, it's learning by doing. It, it, like, honestly, just, I don't know, watch every video on my channel. Honestly. Then go on YouTube, you know, go to YouTube University, watch more videos and spend half an hour every single day trying different prompts you find. You really need to try them. This is like by wa by watching the stream, you're going to learn something, but you really need to like, you know, you need to be copy pasting that stuff, my man. You need to be get my free ebook, copy paste every single example in there. There's a hundred. See what you get. 
look at how the different examples get you different outputs, right? On ev with every prompt, I always have four examples. Look at how the, the results differ when you change like one word, right? Internalize that, sleep over it, do it again, do it regularly. Do that for one month and you'll be, be at a level where you can, you know, do some serious jobs. Okay, so this um, into the 4.0 limit recently a lot. Um, I actually got, uh, I actually bought two accounts because um, we, we're we doing, we're upgrading the ebook and we just had to run so many prompts and yeah, I just had to get two accounts to, to get it done. Yeah, Tam, for, for sure. I hope that helped. But really, like, what it, it's a good balance. You need to balance like practice and theory. You can't just be watching only videos. You also need to be in there and doing it. That's that's the most important part. Okay, all right. So now we have this um, fantastic, fantastic um, little book outline here. So the next step here, and this is what I didn't show in the video. I, I it's it's really you know. You can either do this, or you can be like write me 1.1 I think th I'm pretty sure you could also do this um types of content chat GPT can generate okay now it does this I should have said introduction one yeah because chap now it takes chapter one but the way this works is um <laughs> there's no quick and easy fix people keep asking is how do I get around doing all of this manually well you're gonna you're gonna need to do it like this. <laughs> you're gonna open up a Word document. You're gonna open a blank document. Left side of the screen, right side of the screen, and you can already see what's going on here. So, oh, type the prompt slowly into your keyboard. It's all about command competence and clear instructions. I think that's a good point, actually. Retyping it. I think that's really solid advice. Okay, so this would be like, okay, chapter one, content creation, and we post it in here, you know, and write 1.2. <laughs> and this is what you do, my man. This is how you, this is this is how you would write an ebook. Oh, um, some license thing with the, okay, tech, let's just open up text edit for, you know, whatever. It's not ideal, but it will get the job done. So this is how you piece your ebook together. You're just gonna go one by one and you're gonna copy this text in here. And again, I said this multiple times, I say it in the course, I'll say it now. Um, if you, on the keyboard, if you press Command on Mac, Command, Shift, Option V. Wait, that was wrong. Wait. <laughs> um. There's a shortcut to paste without formatting. Is it command shift control? Wait, what's wrong? It used to be it used to be command shift option V. Let's Google it. Paste without formatting Mac. Yeah, command shift option V. No, 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 I got it right. Why doesn't it work? Command shift option V. Interesting. So usually in all other apps, you can you can post like this without the formatting, and then you can get rid of this highlighted text. Maybe it's just a setting within text edit. Anyway, this is a great tip. On Windows, it's Control Shift V, and then you can get rid of the formatting. Um, just a hot little tip there. Okay. So the next step is like copying this, right? And you go in here. It's gonna take a minute, right? But you like now write one point three. You're gonna piece it together like that. And then you're gonna like adjust the formatting and everything. But essentially this is gonna give you <laughs> this is gonna give you a full book. <laughs> That's a point here. And like this, you can write uh texts of whatever length. I think you get the get the point here. So we would go through, we're not gonna read all this, right? That's not the point of the video. We're also not gonna generate every single point in this outline. That's not the point of this video. What is the point of the video is giving you little tips in between. So now it's using all the context that we gave it from the transcript, from the blog article to write this outline. And the interesting thing is I've tested this and also now when it extends on these points, it uses the context we provided it above. That's why this workflow is so great. Okay. So this, this is how you would write books, right? 
of another part, copy paste that in here, you get a long document, boom, you can write however long. Let me give you a bonus tip here before we round it out. There's another trick and as long as you didn't watch every single second of every video I uploaded, you might not know this one. Because it's in, um, this This one comes from, uh, I published it, but I think most people won't know it. It comes from five more tricks, no, five more secrets to writing with ChatGPT. And it goes as follows. Boom, right there. <laughs> this is such a hack, you guys. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I don't. No, I don't use desktop apps. I always use the browser. Um, yeah. <laughs> I always, I always use the browser, uh, and I use Notion as my prompt database. Um. So, so this. Okay. So this wrote the first. You see, this is not a conclusion. Whenever you're a lifelong fan of these. Uh, oh, wait, 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 did this just give me a thousand word essay? Okay, so this is a trick that I used like a billion amount, of billion times. <laughs> this used to work really well. I don't have, why is it not linked? I'm paying for Microsoft 365. Either way, um, let's try this one more time, maybe with GPT-4. This is just a neat little trick on how to like get long text. I, I just wanted to share this with you. But to be honest, I'm a little confused why I just like wrote the whole text there. It wasn't a thousand words. So let's see how GPT-4 handles this. But the slides ruined my book. Not sure what that means. Hmm. All right, so this is writing the first half, but I just wanted to show you this trick because you can like split things up into different workloads, just like we did with the outline prompt, right? And you can segment your work and then tackle the various segments one by one. That's how you get around the case limitation. It's, it's quite the, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if they intended for this use case, but it definitely works. I tell you, I've been, I've used this a lot, um, and I believe GPT-4 is is fulfilling our request better, because here's another tip: GPT-4 is way better at word count. It's not perfect, but it's way better. Okay, that's just one of the many things that GPT-4 can be, can do better. I'll have a separate video on that. Um, yes, there you go. So this is now write the second. It worked. So now you would, would be like this. See, and this is not the ending. This is not the conclusion. So GPT 3.5 messed up there. But this is how you would write thousand words. And you could do this with however many words you want, you guys. You could be like, write the third 500 words. Just do it in 500 word chunks and you can, you know, extend your writing. So yeah, I think that's a bunch of good tips there. Um, yeah, I, honestly, I think this is where we'll round it out. I think this is where we're at. I really wanted to do the stream, get into the practical parts of this. Maybe let's just talk about the style part to round it out. Um, because I found it to be, I found it to be better to write, to let it write the text in its own style for the book. Um, no, it's not bad. That's wrong. That's wrong. I'm sorry. It's not better. I personally prefer the approach of it letting it write this neutral style that it has, right? This like semi-formal, polite, uh, fact-driven style that it has by default. And then I apply my own style. So I would let it write that, then I copy all, all of it out into a different app, and then I would be like, now rewrite in the style of Joe Rogan, and it does it. Um, and then I get to use bits and pieces of the original, and the style of Joe Rogan. If I if I were to include in the style of Joe Rogan here, or in the outline, um, you kind of you know you tie your hands together and you can't really you don't really get options anymore. But this way you always have the original text and you can just copy it and be like rewrite it in the style of 
Bukowski or whoever you want. So that's a little pro tip. It's it's in video production that would be referred to as you know recording raw. So you get the um, or or even in photography like you know using raw format and then making the decisions after the fact. It's the same thing here. You kind of get the raw output and then you can apply styles to it for maximum flexibility. If you want speed, you can just include this. Either way, I think that's it, you guys. I think that's it, it you guys. Um, thank you so much for joining today. I, I think we'll just round it out here. I just wanted to get some of these ideas out there, show you practical examples of how to put this to work, show you some tips, tell you a little bit about GPT-4. You know, it's better at word count. It's better at organizing itself. It's better at creativity when you direct it. GPT-3.5 is better at thinking outside of the box when you don't direct it. It's a but generally speaking, 90%, 95% of the time, you just want to go with GPT-4. Just use it all the time. It's fantastic. It can write you some text for you with little tricks like this. And I hope you learned something. I hope you picked something up. Thank you so much. I'll go get some sleep, some much needed sleep. And I'll see you soon. See you in the Discord and see you